coming, those of you who happen to show up, hi Tony. <laughs> um, few of you I know, few of you I don't, thank you for coming. Um, and we spent a lot of time just getting everything going, so without further ado, I'll introduce our special guest speaker with lots of thanks, Shelly, um, to come and uh, give us plenty of knowledge on social media. Mm -hmm. Good, thank you. a lot about social media, but I'm also going to touch on networking as well. Uh, my name is Shelly Osterhout. I am the owner of Computer Solutions of America. Uh, we are a full technology solution provider. In other words, I can fix computers, I can network, I can do website design, database design, uh, anything that's pretty much technology we can handle. Um, we are a very avid Facebook user, LinkedIn, Twitter, so on and so forth. I'm a very firm believer in social networking. Um, I'm also a, a very avid networker. In other words, I am never in my store. I have seven employees, but I'm never at my store. I am always at an event. Oh, you'll never see me there except maybe a few minutes, say hi to some clients, and I'm out of there, or to meet with clients. Uh, I am very involved in a lot of the charity events that are going on in the community. Uh, every gala that I'm aware of, party, function, benefit, I am there. The reason I'm there is, one, to get my face out there for people to know that I am a nerd. I am darn proud to be a nerd. And I can fix your computer, I can create your website design, or website design and I can create your database. We want you together. So, um, one of the ways that I am very avid out in the community is I'm involved in a lot of the chambers. Uh, the Chamber of Commerce for the Hispanic Chamber. I'm an ambassador for, they, for them. I'm also an ambassador for the Bonita Chamber as well. Why those two chambers is what I'm asked a lot. Uh, one, the Bonita Chamber is one of the largest chambers uh, in Southwest Florida. Uh, they are a wonderful chamber. They are very involved. All of the chambers are going through growing pains right now in Southwest Florida. Uh, the Hispanic Chamber is another wonderful chamber, very family oriented, uh, very involved in the community, very involved in getting the word out that there are events out there that you can get your name out there, your business out there, and get more clients to, your, to you. Uh, being an ambassador for the chambers uh, is a great way to get your business known, obviously get your personality out there and see what type of opportunity your business can bring to the rest of the chamber. So that is one avenue that I'm very involved in. There's a networking event that's called the Bridge Networking, Lee Collier Networking. They're all smaller. These are smaller events that happen. They're monthly. Uh, the Bridge Networking, which is in Lee County, uh, they have two venues, one in Fort Myers and one in Cape Coral, and I run the Cape Coral. Um, event. So I am the person that stands up in front of everybody and has to tell everybody this is the sequence of events, this is where we're going to do this, and so on and so forth. Why do I do this? Even though I'm running my business, I'm also out there also doing free advertising for myself by running these events. Not to mention with the chambers, as an ambassador, I am in charge of bringing people to the chamber. That's my goal. My goal is to bring people in and tell them how great the chamber is, which it is, because I make a lot of money with the chambers, a lot of money in fact. So the other big opportunity with networking is BNI. BNI is Business Networking International. Uh, as a business owner, that has been the largest bang for my buck for my business. Business Networking International, obviously an international networking um, group. Uh, they only allow one industry per category, so I'm the only nerd. There's also a website designer, though, in that group as well that I'm in. It's the second largest chapter that's in Southwest Florida. Um, I have, it's a wonderful group of people. They meet in the morning. I keep telling them, nerds don't do mornings. People, please, can we get this all straight? All right? We're night owls. That's what we do. But they don't listen to me. Anyway, because all the rest of the, the groups that are in there, all the rest of the industries, of course, are morning-oriented groups, like the plumbers, the contractors, so on and so forth. You get my drift. 
So, on Thursday mornings, this is what I do, at least, and I have no problem with saying it. Thursday mornings, I have my B&I. I do my B&I. I'm all happy, go lucky. I'm the nerd. I can fix everything. I have to downplay it because I can't touch on the website design because we've got a website designer in my B&I, although that doesn't matter. Then, after that, we get out at 9 o'clock and I go home and go to bed. For an hour. Exactly. That's what I do every Thursday morning. So there is ways around it. It's not like you can't go just because it's in the morning. It's just you've got to work around it. So, um, B&I, great investment. It is pricey. It is. Although, it is worth it. It's worth every penny. Another networking event is Quality Service Pros. A little more expensive. Although, and this is the one big question that I get a lot because I'm so involved in so many things is, how can you afford it? My answer is, how can you afford not to do it? Because, just like B&I, which is a $1,000 a year investment, the issue is, is if I can make my money back in two weeks, which is what I do, every group that I'm in, I make my money back in two to three weeks. So, if you look at it as, okay, I'm making this investment, although I anticipate if I get my money back in a month, exactly, right. So, therefore, why not invest in it? Because if you're that proficient in what you're doing, you will make your money back. So don't be scared by upfront cost. If you look at the group, go to the group at least two or three times, check it out and see whether there's that synergy, whether you fit in, and you'll be fine. It's the, the issue is, is don't be scared off by that initial fee because it's going to happen, unfortunately. So networking in a face-to-face -face is extremely important. Now, when I go to an event, which by the way, you're going to hear about a gala that I'm putting on, um, which will be a lot of fun for all of you. Anyway, when I go to an event, a networking event, this is the norm at an event for most people. Hi, my name is Shelly. Hi, my name is Shelly. Hi, my name is Shelly. Now, that's not what you want to do. When you go to an event, it is to create relationships. That is it. When I walk in, my goal is to create two new relationships. That's it. That's my goal. When I walk out, I will have at least two business cards, and those two people are my goal for the week. Meaning, I'm going to sit down with them or schedule an appointment to get to know those two people. When I sit down with them, it's not about me, it's about them. It's about creating that relationship with them. Because relationships are going to make more money than handing out business cards. Don't get me wrong, I give out a lot of business cards. Actually, I don't as much, because we all know about this, right? Okay? Yes, I am a nerd. Anyway, so, and then I'll talk about this in a second. But anyway, you don't want to just shove your business cards out there. You really want to, don't give your business card out first, wait till they ask. Once they ask, then give. And then, if they ask about your business, then talk about the business. Although, you really want to be careful not to force feed what you do on everybody. Wait, let them ask. Another thing is, name tags. Extremely critical. Extremely critical. Always have something on you that can initiate a conversation. Here's mine. What's that thing on your name tag? I love that. And then I say, don't scan me. And they say, huh? Where's your phone? And they say, it's right here. Great, you've got an iPhone. Let's download an app. Oh, how do you do that? Let me show you. And I show them how to download an app and then I show them how to use the app. Now, how long does that take me? Maybe five minutes? Maybe. And of course, I'm chit-chatting with them at the same time. But the issue is, is that I'm trying to come up with ideas where I can create a conversation between someone. One way that I've done that is through QR codes. Does everybody know what a QR code is? Everybody? Okay. Good. This is what we should be doing in technology. Okay. A QR code is the newest marketing strategy that's out there. It's already real popular in Europe very popular in Europe. Uh, if we were to go to a restaurant over in Europe, we would see a QR code as a sticker or whatever, or a sign, and the QR code would have their menu. You wouldn't be given a piece of paper with the menu. You'd take your cell phone, which your smartphone, which 70% of Americans have smartphones now, so it's worth talking about. Take your smartphone, scan the QR code, and the menu is in the phone. 
So therefore, now from now on, that customer has your menu in their cell phone until they decide to delete it. Or realtors, another big one is, if I'm a realtor and I'm selling property, I no longer need to have pieces of paper at each one of my properties. I'm going to have a sticker on my sign that has my big face on it. And that sticker, I'm going to scan with my smartphone, the QR code, and it will bring in the MLS listing or my website or whatever my little heart desires. Website, whichever it might be. Website for the real estate. And I've grabbed her off the phone. How politically correct am I? Anyway, so, <laughs> needless to say, um, always in some way, shape, or form, try to figure something out that you can do to make yourself stand out. Another thing, networking, you're going to always see me in red. When I walk into an event, you will always see me in red. Always, 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 always. Everybody, when I walk in and they say, ah, there's Shelly, because she's in red. The next thing, you're always going to see a scarf from my hair, and it's always different. Always. That's just my branding. Meaning I've branded myself. If you look at my Facebook, same thing. It's this, actually, it's this exact picture that's on my business card, which is with a scarf, and with my red shirt. Yes. Thank you. So you want to really figure a way, exactly, you want to figure out a way to make yourself stand out in a networking event. The networking events for the Hispanic Chamber right now average about 100 people. So in 100 people, I need to make myself stand out. At the Bonita Chamber, their after hours events average about two to 300 people. So I have to stand out. Because if I stand out, I know for a fact I am going to talk to more people. Whereas if I blend in and just have the normal norm on, I'm going to have to struggle a little bit more to get seen. Whereas with my red, everybody knows me on Facebook as well. We publish on Facebook at least every two to three days, no matter what. There's my intro for Facebook. Now, Facebook is getting the reputation of being your new driver's license. So. Start to think about that. If it's going to be your new driver's license, you, I've got a whole bunch of, just, don't you pass it back for me, please? Um, it is getting to be known as the driver's license of the future. So what I always tell everybody, number one, is be professional on your Facebook, even though, even though the, you always want to be more personable and tell about what's going on. Don't talk about the fact that you're frying eggs that you're going to the bathroom, whatever, it doesn't matter. It's a professional, it's just like a resume, a driver's license. And myself as an employer, the first thing that I do before I hire somebody is I look at their Facebook. First thing I do. I would pull out my cell phone, great looking resume, let's see what they're really like. <laughs> and I go to their Facebook. And I look at them. And the thing to keep in mind, I'm a nerd. So if it was there before, I'll find it. So just because you removed it, there's ways that I can see it. So, yep, exactly. So keep that in mind, please. Keep your Facebook professional. Very, very professional. If you go to my Facebook, uh, and yes, all of you that really know the ins and outs, the contract that we all sign, per se, when we do a Facebook, you're only supposed to have one Facebook profile. I do have two. Yes, I'm, I live on the edge. Um, I have two. I have one that's Shelly Osterhout, which is what I'm known as in the whole community. Um, I also have another one, which is my maiden name, which is what I have my family on. So if you go to Shelly Osterhout, you will not see one iota of information about my family. None. Nobody knows if I have kids. Nobody knows that I where I live or anything. Everything is about Shelly Osterhout and Computer Specialists of America, or Computer Solutions of America, which is our new company name as of tomorrow. So Facebook, if you go to my Facebook and check it out, and I'm not going to show it to you right now. And the reason I'm not going to show it to you right now is all of you, when you go home, you're going to friend me, and you can look at my Facebook. Okay? So. Um, on my Facebook, you will see I have, whatever, I think 2,000 something or other, anyway, friends. Um, which doesn't matter, because numbers don't matter as much on Facebook as what most people think. Um, I strategically have certain people on my Facebook.
strategically. I mean, look like I've got a lot of numbers, but they're strategic. Most of them are my clients. Most of them are my clients. This is the way that I communicate now with my clients is through Facebook. Now, why do I do that? Well, there's a couple of reasons. Do all of you know about Facebook places? I saw no, 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 no. Okay, great. Here's your education for the day, guys. Ready? Facebook places is the coolest thing since sliced bread. Good job. We just got one. Yes. All right. When I got here, I went into my Facebook on my phone, and I told the world that I'm here right now, and I'm talking to all of you. And what that means is, and I guarantee this, by the end of the day, I will have at least two, three comments on the fact that I was here. So what did I just do? I advertised for Hodges, and I told everybody what I'm doing, because my clients want to know what I'm doing. They really do. You'd be amazed. But they also will want to know what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. So they might ask, oh, I didn't know that they had an IT department. Intro to Hodges, so on and so forth. Now, what I've done is I've created this advertising for my business that every time I go someplace, I'm going to tell you where I'm at. So if I go and meet a client, and they're on Facebook, by the way, most of them are, I will put that I am at, just an example, I'm at the British pub with Tim O'Gorman, which owns a dry cleaning company over in Benita, by the way. Um, and we're talking about his website. So really, it's like exactly. You people, you really exactly. I just pitched for the British pub. Yeah. I've just talked about Tim himself. I've just talked about Tim's company, mm -hmm. which is Champion Cleaners, by the way. And, which is one of Teresa's clients as well, we have a mutual client, Teresa, which was going to do this lecture. Um, and obviously I've advertised for myself. On that one post, I got three posts on it, three comments on it, and this was in places, okay, Facebook places. Has anybody heard about Foursquare? You guys know about Foursquare? I've Same thing. Same concept, except it's on Facebook. Same exact concept. But there's no mayors or anything like that, you don't get points or anything, it's just... Facebook places. So all in all, I got two to three, or I got three comments on that one post. One woman said, I love the food there. The next one said, you go to the greatest places to eat. And then the third one was, Tim's so cool. Okay, which he is really cool. So Tim posted that one. <laughs> yeah. No. no, no. no. So, um, Stay involved in what Facebook's bringing out. Has anybody heard of Facebook deals? Another really good way to advertise on Facebook if you're in business or if you work for a business. Uh, Facebook deals just came out, uh, give or take a month and a half ago-ish, uh, and it allows us to put coupons on Facebook. So, in other words, if I check in, yes, that's true, places, if I check in, automatically a coupon will pop up that says, oh, you get 10% off any service at Computer Solutions of America. So, therefore, now, again, I am advertising to everyone that I have a deal, but you got to come and see me at my store. So, that gets traffic to me, and everybody's happy. Because they got a coupon, I got them in my store, and I don't pay a penny. That's exactly it. I don't pay a penny. Another uh, question that I get asked an awful lot is, I don't have the time for Facebook. What am I supposed to do about it? Because I, I, I can't spend that much time. Well, I'll tell you when I am most productive on Facebook. I am most productive between 9 p.m. and 11 p.m. I make more money on Facebook in those two hours than any other time during the day. You want to know why? Of course you do. Because during that time, most people are sitting in front of their computer just relaxing and they want to chat. I'll chat. I have no problem chatting. Let's chat. So they'll chat in and we'll start talking. And guess what? I got them automatically because I'm there, I'm available, awkward time. 
If we want to talk technology nerd, I'm in. Let's talk. So between 9 and 11 p.m. is when I'm on, and you can see on chat, if you want to chat with me, I am wide open to it. Except on Fridays and Saturdays. They're usually not with them. But anyway, during the day, um, our, my Facebook is always up. It's always open. Uh, although I do have my administrative assistant, which handles part of the traffic that comes in. But that is one way that we communicate with our clients is through Facebook. Because most of my clients are on Facebook. And if they're not, before they leave my store, they are. I get them on Facebook. And I teach them how to use it. I do lectures on Facebook at my store, so if they don't understand it, they can come into my store and figure it out. So Facebook has a lot of opportunity. Um, I'm going to just touch on briefly because a couple of you might be thinking, well, what about LinkedIn and what about Twitter? Well, LinkedIn is great for certain professions, absolutely great. Um, my database management side of my business, I do well at LinkedIn. My website repair or my computer repair side don't do as well on LinkedIn. Facebook for my repair side, awesome. Because everybody knows me, I can fix everything. So it depends. Twitter, I have clients that have travel agencies, uh, that have co obviously companies that are more international. I push them to Twitter. Myself, I don't get much out of Twitter in my particular business at all, in fact. So down here in Southwest Florida, Facebook really is the most effective way, social media-wise, to get the most bang for your buck. Before I go on, is there any questions about anything that I've said so far? Have you, because a lot of the population in this area is older, maybe not in as much tune with the technology, mm -hmm. do you find a lot of difficulty with clientele that way? Where you meet people, but they're not really, they're kind of resistant to all that stuff? Every once in a while, I do lectures at several of the retirement type communities, gated communities that are mainly retirees, Benita Bay is one of them, um, and I do a lecture there on Facebook to teach them how to use Facebook. Most of them have an idea of it because that's, their grandchildren call them and say, Grandma! I'm sending, I'm putting new pictures on my Facebook, you've got to get on there to be able to see it. So most of them are very well aware of the advantages. It's more, this is their number one concern. What if I break it? And as long as they hear you can't break it, they're fine. But yes, I do see that quite a bit. And I don't think that they are at the point anymore where they're scared of it. It's more, if they're scared of anything, it's the computer rather than Facebook anymore. They do every once in a while say, uh, am I going to get a virus from it? And uh, I'm the first to, to tell them, no, it's not a virus. It's going to be a Trojan, and that leads right into virus removal for me. But anyway, it's usually a Trojan. Um, but they're normally more worried about catching something from Facebook. And once they hear that, as long as you don't click on those movies and a lot of the major links that say, look, you look so funny in this movie, then they're fine with it. That's a great question. Thank you. Any other questions? I have one. Sure. Um, I love questions, by the way. <laughs> I'm not sure what's the best way to put it. Like, that you say you go on Facebook before you came here and you say, I'm a conscious at the IT department. Mm -hmm. So in that case, you're doing an advertisement. Do you get any point for that? Or are you just advertising yourself? Or would I say, like, is it the same way you're wearing, like, they were Clothing where it has like the rock going on it, but you don't get any benefit. Does that kind of make sense? Yeah. I mean, do you get a benefit of saying, "Oh, I'm not conscious. I'm doing a speech"? Yes. The benefit is this. The benefit is it's marketing. It's a marketing strategy that allows me to tell my customer or my customer base that is my friend mm -hmm. on Facebook where I'm at and what I'm doing because. One of my goals, obviously, as a business owner is to be in, is in front of as many people as I possibly can at any given time. Because I need people to know who I am and that I can help them in their business with regards to technology. So therefore, people knowing that I'm here right now and that I'm talking to you is extremely beneficial, obviously, to you, 
for learning purposes, but it's also beneficial to me because my clients and my friends on Facebook know that I'm doing this lecture okay. and that I am doing it here at Hodges, therefore advertising for Hodges. Okay. So yes, it's it's marketing. And I'll just go say and showing that you're that you're diverse by going to all different things is also very good. Yes. You're showing your diversity. Absolutely. Feeling to people. Exactly. It's always got a, a bit of a, like a snowball effect too. Facebook, I think, is great with that. Where you know, by you liking one page, or we like a page, say a business or something like that. Well, then automatically your friends are going to see that you like this page. Maybe they'll check it out. The same thing with places. You're checking out places, and people will sort of snowball from that. Okay. Right. And you can learn more about your society. Learn more about Southwest Florida by looking and seeing, like that one that I said. I was at the British pub with Tim O'Gorman. Well, a lot of people are like, wow, what's that? After, after that, at a networking event, I had people come up to me and say, so how was the food? Was it good? It's just a conversation. Exactly. Oh, yep. It works for a good time. Correct. Yep. Your question. I haven't been to your Facebook page yet, but do you keep it pretty straightforward, clean and everything, or do you like put color, accent, anything to stand out? It's on? pure clean. Yep, it's the Facebook template, regular Facebook template. Yeah. Because, and I, I, that's a great question, and I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to tell you why I don't use the Facebook template. And, and this is me, this is just me and my business. My brand is Shelly Osterhout. My, I'm not branding, per se, Computer Solutions of America. I'm out there branding me. So therefore, if I was out there branding the technology portion, obviously I'd have a business page, which I do. So I'm pushing my business page, yes, although I'm pushing Shelly more. And the reason I am is for marketing purposes, right. because I want people to understand who I am and that I am the best person that you can go to for technology in Southwest Florida. So for me, I, have, I work off my profile. For me. Now, don't get me wrong, like, uh, most of my businesses, I have an auctioneer, he does the same thing. I have him only on a profile. I don't have him with a business page because he's selling himself. He, he has a service, but he's really selling himself. Mm -hmm. So I've branded myself out there of, I network. I love to network. I'm never home, I'm never at my store. My children, yes I have children. My 10-year-old, if, if but it's an event that I have to be at, he's with me. And he doesn't mind. They don't care. It's a conversation piece in its own right there, my 10-year-old. He's a nerd, too. So we can all talk nerd and so on and so forth. So for me, it works. And a lot of women ask me, so you're out at all these night events. How do you see your kids? Ah, but that's the key. I do see my kids a lot more than probably a lot of mothers do. Because in between my hours, because I am the owner, I can go home anytime I want. So I go home, I spend time with them, do dinner with them, but then I'm back out at the networking event. Either I bring them, or obviously I've got an 18 and a 20 year old also. So they're home. So anyway, uh, networking, extraordinarily critical. Uh, I do a lot of lectures on just networking, not even social networking, but networking. Uh, Teresa Ayers, which was gonna be the speaker, phenomenal on the social media. She does a, an awesome job. Her daughter <coughs> uh, is over in California and she does the website design and part of the social media. Teresa does uh, training sessions at her house on social media. So she just does Facebook and she will just flood your brain with Facebook or just Twitter, blogging, so on and so forth. Um, so that's my pitch for Teresa. She's totally cool. Is she? And she, she has a blog, right? right? Oh, definitely. Right? Yep, absolutely. She works. So she does blogging for businesses. Blogging? Absolutely does. Uh -huh. Yes. Is, is in your opinion is that a a, a really growing field? Blogging. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, this is my good, opinion on blogging. blogging. This is this is my opinion on blogging. <laughs> blogging is awesome. Absolutely, probably your biggest bang out there on the internet if you have time. Don't create a blog unless you have time. And right now, the average person is going to get more publicity on Facebook and more traffic on Facebook than they are to their blog. Let's face it, blogging, you have to get the traffic there. 
Facebook, it's already there. So I pretty much do the equivalent of a blog on my Facebook. So, and in fact, on my Facebook, um, I am an educator. One of my goals is to educate people on technology. That's why I have the newest technology everywhere and anywhere, because I like to educate people. Uh, my Facebook is an education. I am constantly, every two to three days, you will see something new about what's going on in technology that, that would affect the average consumer. Not something, you know, that's earth shattering, that's happening, just that hardcore nerds would appreciate, uh, but it's something that the average consumer or business owner would appreciate. For example, uh, how is it that I keep spam from going into my inbox and outlook? That's a really big question out there. So I answer it. I'm in social media and I love social media, although I spend a lot of time in Facebook and I don't spend enough time in Twitter and so on and so forth. Well, then we tell them about TweetDeck, teach them about the other programs that are out there. Uh, so I am a very firm believer in educating, so I use my Facebook to educate my clients, which in turn, they tell their friends, oh, I got this great piece of information on Shelly's Facebook, go ahead, and it was free, go ahead and send her a friend request. And then you'll be able to hear exactly what she's telling everybody. So that's how I use my Facebook. I use it for educational purposes. There is a book out there that I would highly recommend all of you listening to, by the way. It is on Audible, which is a downloadable program. Uh, it is called Crush It. Crush It. And am I going to tell you the author? Of course I am. <laughs> because I listen to this book constantly. It was actually a client of mine, a realtor, that told me about this book. And this book is just amazing. Crush It. Why now is the time to cash in on your favorite passion. It's Gary something, because of the V. That's all I can see. All right, let's see what it is. B-A-Y-N-E-R-C-H-U-K. Gary. Awesome book. <laughs> yeah, right. You can that. Very something. Yeah, very, yeah. B-A-Y-N-E-R-C-H-U-K. Uh, this book is all about social media okay. and networking. Great book. You can download it, obviously, I'm sure, on other various websites, not just by Audible. But anyway, uh, that book has a lot of information um, about social media, and Facebook is a big chunk of where he talks um, about how to get recognized in your community and throughout the world and so on and so forth. He also talks a lot about video, which is a debatable factor right now. Is video really effective? Well, obviously, we know from an SEO standpoint, from a search engine optimization standpoint, eh, not really. Although, will it get the traffic in there and keep people on your website more? He talks a lot about video and how it interacts with the website. Myself, my take on it is if there's an SEO effect, I'll take it. If not, I'll get to it when I get to it. So. Um, any other questions? Because I know I'm way over 30 minutes. So I apologize. How, how, how big is your database about? I'm sorry? How big, about how big is your database? Of how your friends? Uh, your, your, your I am at 24,320 some. Verizon cannot support my database. Because I keep it on my phone. I gotta tell you, this is really funny. How long funny. did it take you to get this? This is really funny, okay? This is, really, this is a true story, swear to God. I walked into Verizon in Fort Myers, and I have never been in there before, um, but obviously I'm real prevalent on Facebook. Anyway, and my store, this is a background, my store, I, I initially started my store in the Edison Mall. I was a kiosk in the center of the mall, okay? And we fixed computers right there in the mall. Anyway, so I walk in there, and I put in my information at the little kiosk, and put in that I had a technology problem, which was that my contacts would not back up. Okay, I mean it kept freezing, error, 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 error. So I went in there and I put in my information and uh, I start just looking around the phones and everything and this young lady walks up to me and she goes, aren't you the woman with 5,000 contacts? I said, yeah, I got more than 5,000, yes. Yeah. She goes, 
I've heard all about you. You're the one that took the server down. <laughs> <laughs> So I said, pooey on it. She says, well, I'll do it for you because I can do it right here and it'll work. Okay, sounds good. Let's do that. So we're talking and everything. We're talking about video cards. I know, it's cool. We're talking about video cards. And she says, oh, my God, you've got more than 5,000. She's watching the numbers going. She says, you've got more than 5,000. She goes, oh, my God, you're at like 8,000. She calls over two people. She's like, come here, look. Come here, look. She's got like 8,000 contacts in her. So another 20 minutes go by, and of course we're at like 18,000 something or other. And she's like, I can't believe you have this many. And by then, of course, everybody in the Verizon store that works there has all gone by to see this number. So I'm there a half hour, and we're at like 21,000 something or other. And, uh, and now it's just boring. Now I'm like, okay, I really got to go. I really got to, I got work to do and so on and so forth. I said, she says, do me a favor, text me what your total ends up being. I can't even wait to hear it. And so sure enough, I got out to my car, I get home, and it ended up being 24,832 or some ridiculous number and everything. But anyway, I still cannot back up to the Verizon server. I ended up calling the, the guy that I got my phone through is a hardcore nerd and has contacts with Verizon. And I said, you know, I can't back it up. And he called his contact. And the guy was the one to verify that, yes, I took the server down for Verizon. And they uh, now they had a 5,000 limit is what they had is a 5,000 contact limit. And now they're extending it. And anyway, so I still can't back up. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> it is what it is. <laughs> Isn't that a nerd's dream, taking down a server? Yeah, yeah, really. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. Well, you like, got recognized yes, for it. My claim to fame. I took it down. Without, without, without intending it to do it. Exactly. Yes, 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 yes. But anyway, yeah, I've got a lot, a lot of contacts. And I keep them all on my phone, so my phone is my baby. And I back them up to my SD card, and then I back them up to my computer, and all that fun stuff. If, if you were going to do a brief breakdown of different different media, social medias, and what they are particularly good for, what would you say? Like restaurants, Twittering, uh, restaurants, Facebook, both. How about services instead of like, or you know, retail, restaurants, dining, mm -hmm. yep. da, 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 da. How would you? But all the restaurants that I support are on Facebook, every one of them. Mm -hmm. I, I'm telling you, down in Southwest Florida, your biggest bang is going to be Facebook, period. It is. Because everybody that is down here knows about Facebook. If you ask the average business owner right now, do you have a Twitter account? They go, no, not really. I don't believe in it. The average will say that. Uh, and it depends on the industry. Like I said, I've got a, a brand new travel agency that just started. It's actually a hostel-oriented um, travel agency. And he has a Twitter account. I highly recommend a Twitter for him, him because he's going to be international. So for him, Twitter, he's going to get a lot of it. I was involved in the Twestable last year. And with the Twestable, we had, ready for this? I know, you're just dying to know. Ten people show up. Yeah, what ten. What is that? The Twestable was a way for, and it was an international. For everybody on Twitter to get together. Get together yep, we had ten people show up at it, our Twestable <gasps> for Southwest Florida. Now, wow. Facebook social, by the way, there's a, a Facebook social every last Friday of the month. Fourth. Is it the fourth Friday? Or the last Friday. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Every fourth Friday of the month, there is a Facebook social. Jody Pugh puts it on. Uh, last, it was last week, so it must be the fourth Friday. The fourth Friday of every month. Uh, it, last month, it was at um, Hemingway's in Bonita. And we had, actually I'll give you this, our very first Facebook social, we had 338 people show up. Uh, the next one we had, which that one was at, I'm not going to remember where it was at, but it doesn't matter. The next few that we had, we tried Cape Coral, we had maybe 50 people show up, so no more Cape Coral. Then we had the 
Bahama Breeze. We did one there, and that, nope, that was at Fort Myers. Uh, we did uh, Bahama Breeze, and we had approximately 200 and some people. And we would have had more, except that was the day that the gas main broke in Fort Myers. <laughs> yeah, that was the day, so <laughs> plop that. Um, this last one that we just had at Hemingway's, we had roughly 180 people show up. Um, and they had the big event at um, Coconut Point as well during that time, too, so it was perfect timing. But anyway, keep that in mind. Facebook social, great time. Good people there, and obviously it's all people getting to know each other <coughs> through their Facebook. The big networking. It is. It's all networking. It is all networking. That's it, exactly. So it's a lot of fun. Um, if you are not connected with me, friend me, and then you'll see what we put on all of our Facebook. Another really big, important, thank you. <coughs> uh, when you friend somebody, don't just friend them. Give them a comment. Like when you friend me, um, we will put in a comment of thank you for allowing us to be your friend. Computer Solutions of America can handle all of your technology needs, blah, blah, blah. And we added a few more things. Like on this last one that I just accepted last night, he had some cool pictures of him and his son. And I put cool pictures of you and your son. Great intro. So on and so forth. So never just accept. Always give a comment. Always, always, always give a comment. Even if it's just about yourself, you know, I look forward to talking to you someday, whatever. Whatever floats your boat. So you were mentioning um, the woman's name that was, was supposed to talk here tonight? What Teresa Ayers. Uh -huh. Okay, that she does classes, you said. She sure does. And then she's also got a boot camp, uh, which does all of them. It's an all day. Uh, she'll do Facebook, then Twitter, then LinkedIn, and then blogging. <coughs> Great time. And no, I don't do it. I don't do training. At all. Trace does it. She's good at it. I let her take that. I'm, I'm totally good with she, that. Is uh, she, I'm assuming she's a marketing consultant yes, in she the is. area? Mm -hmm. and she, has, she has her own business. Yes, she does. GSW, and I can't remember what it means. But anyway, yes, it is. Okay. Yeah. Any other questions? We have some stuff for you to oh. thank you for. Oh, oh, yay. Thank you very much. <laughs> yay, thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much. mention is on April 29th, oh this is another thing that I do for networking purposes too, not to mention to help out charities. I, I have about 20 charities that I support right now. Uh, we do their websites, we handle all their service and so on and so forth. Um, I had one of my charities come to, me, come to my store a few weeks ago and this is the way it went. She walks in, hey Becky how are you doing? She goes, I am so excited. What are you so excited about? She goes, I just got a $70 donation. And I looked at her and I said, you're excited about $70? Really? Really? This is the only diaper bank in all the state of Florida. The whole state of Florida. She provides diapers to the disabled, uh, the development of delayed, veterans, retirees, and obviously people that just can't afford diapers and formula, um, furniture, clothing, so on and so forth. So uh, CSA is sponsoring a gala, which means a very fun party to acquire funds for Destiny Diaper Bank, which again is the only one in the state of Florida. <coughs> we would love it if all of you would attend. It'll be a very fun event. Some people are dressing up as their favorite actor or actress. Um, it is just like the Academy Awards, so therefore, the VIP tickets, it's $50 and $100 are the tickets. The $100 tickets will get a limo ride from my store over to the event. They get out of the limo, red carpet, up to the backdrop. Oh, don't forget the backdrop photographer there, photographer, photographer, go up to the backdrop, which has all the corporate sponsors on the backdrop, photographer, photographer, they go in, uh, the highest corporate sponsor by industry will get a plaque saying thank you for your donation, again, just like the Academy Awards, so let's say the technology industry, um, Lindsay, which is one of the anchors for News 2, is our MC. She'll have an envelope up at the front with the top runners up, the top three runners up, and she'll say the top three runners up in the technology industry are Comcast, CompUSA, and Computer Solutions of America. And the winner is, and she opens it and tells who the winner is, and that person that won will come up and uh, get the reward. So, cocktail attire, attire or formal attire, whichever floats your boat. 
Um, but it'll be a lot of fun. We have over a hundred silent auction items, and we have three live auctions. A lot live auction items. We have a auctioneer, Rick Gallo, which is donating his time as well. It'll be a lot of fun. A whole lot of fun. Anyway, so I have invites for all of you, and.